Hey guys, today's lesson is about tonsillopharyngeals in children. Uh, to start from uh, the normal function of the tonsils, tonsils participate in a systemic immune surveillance, and in addition, local tonsillar defenses include a line of antigen processing squamous epithelium that involves B and the T cell uh, responses. Uh, tonsillopharyngeals is an acute infection of the pharynx, palatine tonsils, or both. And this is an image of a child having tonsillopharyngeals. It shows uh, massively larger tonsils with exudates. And tonsillopharyngeals is usually viral and most often caused by the common cold virus such as adenovirus, rhinovirus, influenza virus, coronavirus, respiratory syncytial virus, and uh, occasionally by Epstein Barr virus, herpes simplex virus, and uh, cytomegalovirus, and the like. Uh, rarely, uh, Bacterial causes such as pertussis, fusobacterium, diphtheria, syphilis, and gonorrhea can occur. In the group A beta hemolytic streptococcus occurs most commonly between age 5 to 15 and it is uncommon before the age of 3. Uh, when we see the etiology, uh, in about 30% of patients, the cause is bacteria, whereas the rest is viral. And group A beta hemolytic streptococcus is most common. Uh, uh, but Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pneumonia, Mycoplasma pneumonia, and Chlamydia pneumonia are sometimes involved. But overall, the most common bacterial etiology of uh, tonsillopharyngeals in children is uh, group A beta hemolytic uh, Streptococcus. Uh, when we see the signs and the symptoms of tonsillopharyngeals, pain with swallowing is the hallmark and is often referred to the ears. And the very young children who are not able to complain of sore throat often refuse to eat. And high fever, malaise, headache, Geopsids uh, such as nausea and vomiting uh, can occur, and also halitosis and a muffled voice can appear. Escalatino form or non specific rash may also be present, and they also the tonsils are sw uh, swollen and red and they often have purulent exudates. And the tender cervical lymphadenopathy may also uh, appear. Uh, fever, adenopathy, palatal fatigue, and the exudates are somewhat more common with a group A beta hemolytic streptococcus than with a viral tonsillopharyngeals, but there is much overlap. And the group A beta hemolytic streptococcus usually resolves within seven days, and untreated uh, G, uh, group A beta hemolytic streptococcus may lead to a local suppurative complications such as a peritonsal abscess or cellulitis, and sometimes uh, to rheumatic fever and also to uh, acute glomerulonephritis. Uh, this is an image of uh, acute tonsillopharyngeals with uh, enlargement of tonsils and uh, exudates on uh, tonsils. And also there is uh, strawberry tongue, which is a red strawberry tongue, uh, as you see on the image. When we see uh, diagnosis, diagnosis is clinical and it's, sub it's supplemented by culture or rapid antigen tests. And the treatment depends on symptoms and in the case of a group A beta hemolytic uh, streptococcus uh, it involves antibiotics. So clinical evaluation and the group A beta hemolytic streptococcus should be ruled out by uh, rapid antigen tests and the culture or both. And the pharyngeal itself is easily recognized clinically. However, it is causes not. Rhinorrhea and the cough usually indicates a viral cause. So if a child is having signs and symptoms of tonsillopharyngeals with a runny nose and the cough, it is more of viral than bacterial. Uh, this is a grading system for tonsillar enlargement. We say grade 1 uh, tonsillar enlargement if tonsils occupy less than 25% uh, of space between the pillars. So in that case, entire ovula and the tonsils are visible, whereas uh, grade 2 is uh, tonsils which is less than 50% of the space between pillars. And in this case, uh, entire ovula is visible, but tonsils are not visible. Whereas grade uh, 3 is uh, tonsils which is less than 75% of space between uh, pillars and grade 4 is uh, if tonsils is larger uh, and the tocopa is greater than 75 percent of space between pillars and in this case or in the grade 4 tonsillopharyngeals uh, only hard palate is visible as you see on the image uh, the most important thing uh, that is uh, used for diagnosing tonsillopharyngeals in children is a grading system uh, which is a clinical grading system to diagnose a Group A uh, streptococcal pharyngeals. This is uh, this is called Mississiac uh, criteria. The criteria gives one point for a presence of fever which is greater than 38 degrees Celsius, absence of cough, swollen tender anterior cervical lymph nodes, tonsillar swelling or oxidates, and for age between 3 to 15, it gives one point. 
So a score of zero or negative score is associated with a risk of 1 to 2.5 percent. One point is associated with a risk of 5 to 10 percent. Uh, two points is associated with a risk of 11 to 70 percent, and three points is associated with a risk of um, 28 to 35 percent, and four or more points is associated with a risk of 51 to 53 percent to uh, for a positive culture confirmation. So, if a patient is having fever and absent cough with tender anterior cervical lymphadenopathy with uh, tonsillar swelling and activate and ages between 3 to uh, 15, we can give uh, antibiotic without further investigation for uh, tonsillopharyngitis. Uh, regarding differential diagnosis, uh, there are multiple differential diagnoses. From this, uh, infectious mononucleosis is one of them. In infectious mononucleosis, it is suggested by a posterior cervical or generalized adenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly, fatigue, malaise, uh, which is uh, present for more than one week, and a full neck with a petechia of soft palate and the thick tonsillar exudate can present. The other is diphtheria. In diphtheria, there is a dirty gray, thick, tough membrane uh, or pseudo membrane that bleeds if peeled away and uh, the child is most of the time it's, uh, unimmunized. Uh, regarding treatment, there is a component of treatment include trip symptomatic treatment, antibiotic for group A beta uh, hemolytic streptococcus and tonsilloctomy uh, for a recurrent group A beta hemolytic streptococcus. Uh, supportive treatment includes analgesia, hydration and the rest. Analgesics may be systemic or local and the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are usually effective uh, systemic antibiotics. And uh, topical uh, analgesics such as mixing honey with uh, lemon and also lozenge and sprays and they also in, in other ingredients which can be used as a local painkiller can be used. Uh, regarding antibiotic treatment for group A beta amyloidic streptococcus, penicillin is usually considered the drug of choice for group A beta amyloidic streptococcus tonsillopharyngitis and the dose is 250 mg POBID for. Uh, 10 days for less than 27 kg and 500 mg for those greater than 27 kg uh, BID for 10 days. Amoxacillin is effective and the more palatable if liquid preparation is required. And if adherence is a concern, a single dose of benzatine penicillin, 1.2 million international unit IM for uh, greater than 27 kg and 600,000 international units for children less than 27 kg is uh, effective. And other oral drugs include macrolides uh, for those who are having penicillin allergy and also a first generation cephalosporin and eclindamycin can be used. Uh, tonsillectomy should be considered if a group A beta amyloidic streptococcus tonsillitis recurs repeatedly, that means greater than six times per year, or greater than four episodes per year for two years, or greater than three episodes per year for three years, or if acute infection is severe and the persistent despite antibiotics. And other criteria for tonsillectomy include uh, large uh, tonsils that causes uh, obstructive sleep apnea and also recurrent peritonsillar abscess and the suspicious of a possible malignancy. Uh, thank you for your attention and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.